Hey, it's Blake here. My job is making money by selling weird stuff on sites like eBay or Amazon. There are a lot more, but just to give you an idea of what I do, that's it. This video is 10 things under $100 that I use that's gonna help you make more money by improving your efficiency. If you are an online reseller or any business owner, you know that incremental gains every single day, improving your process is a fundamental aspect of building a successful business. Item number one is a thing I've made that is about in the past, and it is so important if you're doing used vintage type stuff that's new in box or has the box art as a uh, integral component of the item's value. So think like a 1965 calculator in the same box. You see it on the shelf, looks awesome, but oh my goodness, some dingbat put a sticker on there and if you peel it off, it's gonna tear away that lime green goodness that they had back then in all the boxes, uh, and it's gonna lower the value. So what you wanna do is buy a label peeler and a heat gun. One of the most common label peelers is a Scotty peeler, but there's other ones too. They don't really make a difference. It's just a piece of plastic that has a flat tip you can use to peel things up. It'll save your fingernails and the heat gun loosens the adhesive so it's not gonna tear off the ink or the top layer of paper or whatever it is you're trying to protect. The Scotty Peeler also is gonna help you not burn your fingers because those heat guns get hot. Could you use a, a blow dryer, a hair dryer? Yes, you could, but those blow out a lot of air and if it's a small item, it might move it. So if it's like a, a book cover, for example, that might open the book up and then it'll, you know, screw up your process. So a heat gun, which you can get for like 20 bucks, a Scotty peeler or any generic label peel you can get for like five bucks for two or like 12 for 10, I think. They're really cheap. All in all, this combo set, which is not offered, so boom, right there. Private label option for you, uh, you sellers out there, um, should be under $40. Item number two is a thermal printer. Now there are tons of thermal printer brands. The big two are Dymo and Zebra. Brother is a big one too. I have a Dymo printer for my FBA labels and a Zebra printer for my 4x6 postage labels that go on like Priority Mail, for example. They cost more than a hundred bucks new, but what kind of dingus is buying stuff new? I'm not. I bought mine used for under a hundred bucks on eBay. You can find them cheap, definitely on Mercari. Uh, even Amazon warehouse deals has these for a steal. What makes these so great? Well, you're not paying for ink, first of all. And second of all, they're smaller, more compact. They can fit on your desk. You just plug it in, press the print button, stick it on your FBA item or your USPS first class mail package and send it off. I do own a ink printer, but uh, I think just if you're doing more than like 10 or 15 items a day, a thermal printer is a must have to boost your efficiency and thusly boost your profits. The third item on this list is a Bluetooth scanner, but it comes with some caveats. If you're doing thrift store resale uh, and you just want to use your phone camera, that is totally fine. When I'm in a Salvation Army, I don't have my Bluetooth scanner. However, if you're doing the kind of business where you have a lot of barcodes to scan, maybe retail arbitrage centric, maybe bulk books, maybe bulk DVDs, we are always scanning the backs of the DVD cases, then a Bluetooth scanner is a absolute necessity. There are several different varieties. I prefer the pistol grip Bluetooth scanner because I have big hands and the tiny little pocket sized ones, I just have a hard time pressing all the buttons. Uh, you know, I don't really care about the small size factor some people do. They like to put them on the bottom of their phones and that kind of stuff. Didn't do it for me. Uh, these cost between like 20 bucks on the low end all the way up to like $500 or more if you get some fancy Wi-Fi enabled one that like goes into your POS system. For 99.9999% of you guys, just a fine cheap one off eBay or Amazon is gonna do just the trick because they're all pretty much the same. They take the barcode, they make it go all magic in the air and put it on your phone, uh, looking up what the item is based again on its barcode. It'll save you time, which again, makes you more money. We are cooking along, huh? So the fourth item is a box 
resizer. There's a few variations of these, but they're pretty much just like fixed angles and wheel gears that give you a straight line when you're resizing boxes. You can just use a razor. I use a razor. It takes a few months to build up the hand-eye coordination to make a straight line. Uh, but why not spend 10, 15 bucks on a box resizer and have it down done immediately? Why would you do this? Because generally, and I'm sure there are some people out there who will point out the exceptions in the comments, uh, a smaller box of the same weight will ship for less than a larger box, again, of the same weight, utilizing USPS or any carrier's volumetric pricing. Also, if you have less void, the item can jangle around less uh, and cause potentially less damage to itself in the shipping process. Check out on Amazon, check out on eBay, just type in boxing resizer, you will see a bunch they are all relatively similar. Again, a razor does just fine, but there's way, way, way more uh, margin for error with a razor. Whereas with one of these gear right angle rollers, you just whoop, 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 you're done. I don't use one. I own one, I don't use one, uh, because I have found just me with a, an X-Acto blade is just as good. Uh, but again, I've been doing this for a long time. So if you're a new, new reseller, or maybe you just don't want to build up the skills like I have, useless skills, but skills nonetheless, uh, buy a box and resizer. They're cheap, they will make you more productive. When you're taking photos, having control over the environment is very important. Have you seen my face change colors? Yes, that's because there are clouds outside. You know how I could have fixed that? If I had nice, soft, clear, translucent white fabric over all of my windows, with big spotlights behind them because that's what the next item is. It's a light box. I've seen these on eBay for all sorts of different prices. They have huge ones that cost like 500 bucks and they have small little tiny ones that cost like 20 bucks. Choose what fits your needs. I use one that gives you a nice white background beyond uh, consistent lighting. And I think for having a, a professional photography setup, this is a great place to start. Again, different prices for new used, you know, based on the size or whatever, but check eBay, check used auctions, and I guarantee you will get a steal because they make a lot of these. If you do Amazon return pallets, you've seen hundreds of these because it's one of the most commonly bought and returned products. We're about at the halfway point of this video, so please give it a big thumbs up if you're still here, and if you're listening to this, you're definitely still here. The next item is an alternative, a cheaper alternative to a light box if you have a place with lots of great natural lighting. Maybe you live in Arizona where there's no clouds, the sun always shines, and uh, it's generally good weather. You can just buy a cheap flat lay background for a dollar even at Dollar Tree. There's more expensive ones that are nicer, and what it is essentially is a portable, consistent, cool, background like a faux granite floor or uh, logs of wood stacked up on each other. Tons of stuff like that. Maybe tiles. I don't know. Uh, I don't sell a lot of clothing so I don't have one of these but that's where I see them mostly being used is in the clothing universe. Uh, anything with like subjective value where the person's like, oh, I like that. You're gonna wanna do things like this to boost up the pictures, make them look nicer, you know, spruce them up with a fancy background. Super cheap, like I said, $1 at Dollar Tree, 10, 15 bucks on Amazon. If you are a clothing reseller or anyone who sells stuff that like has to look good, unlike me who sells VCRs, definitely invest in this. It will help you increase your sales, not by a million percent, but again, these small one or two percent gains really do add up in the long run. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. You guys are great. So the next item is not a specific item, but it's a way of buying items. It's buying in bulk. Buying in bulk. One of the most important factors, or two of them I suppose, in being a successful reseller is having the patience to let initial buys pay off over time and having the financial runway to allow those investments to mature. 
Uh, I'm using investment kind of loosely here, but if I buy a thousand things of duct tape, not duct tape, a thousand things of packing tape, and I use those over six months, uh, and I paid a quarter per unit, I'm saving like $4 per unit, over a thousand rolls. That is huge. It's not profit, but it's money you didn't have to spend. I'm not buying anything like that if it's not by the case. I'm not buying cardboard boxes, for example, unless they're being sold to me at a discount at like, you know, packs of 100 or whatever. How do I find these good deals though? You can do it, you know, two main ways, three ways, but two main ways. Number one is check auctions because a business may have closed down. They may be moving. They may have just bought too much stuff and they wanna offload it to do what they do best, which is not hold on to packing tape, uh, but you know, sell widgets. Number two, just contact supplier. Or number three, similar to uh, you know, the auction method, just check out Facebook Marketplace. Number eight is the kind of thing I always get asked or I read comments about in the comments below the video, which I'm sure you've already added to. It's, should I pay 40 bucks a month for an Amazon Pro subscription? That seems like so much money. Why would I do that? You would do that <laughs> because uh, it introduces you to so many new buyers. Amazon and eBay spend millions and millions of dollars promoting product to buyers. You know, that, that's what your, your fee goes to. That 40 bucks a month might seem like a lot initially, but being on Amazon opens up your business to so many more avenues. You can say, oh, but eCrater and Bonanza are free. Why wouldn't I just use those? Because is the owner of eCrater a multi-billionaire? Oh, no, he's not. That, that's so weird. Amazon runs the game. So why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? Now, if you're really, really against it and you still want to utilize like the Google shopping purchases you get from eCrater, which is like gone now, or Bonanza, or any of these like more, you know, fringe marketplaces, just have your own website. You're going to utilize Google shopping. Plus you can hop over those more generic listings by building a healthy SEO profile around the products. But that's a whole, whole different video. Number nine is a very simple item that saves me so much time and so many returns too. It's a toothbrush. I, you know, it can be any small brush, right? But I buy toothbrushes because they're so cheap, they're mass produced, and they really do a great job at getting whatever cleaner you use, soap and water, goo gone, whatever, into those nooks and crannies. I've got big sausage fingers. I can't use a Q-tip. I have to use some sort of brush, like a toothbrush, to articulate around the edges. Uh, and I save myself so many returns from dummies who say, well, there's dust in the back of this VCR. I can't use this VCR. It's from 1995. But all jokes aside, really, if you are cleaning small toys, electronics, whatever, a toothbrush is a great cheap brush. You can get them for under a dollar easily. I know one of the issues with talking head videos is like, why should you believe me? I could just be a guy talking off of a script. Trust me, there's no scripts here. Uh, I really am a reseller. Uh, and so here is my you know, last item. It's an HDMI to uh, AV cord splitter of sorts. And I use these so much for testing items. I test Blu-ray players, I test VCRs, and what I don't want to do is have a stupid system where I have to change things out and move around and get a new TV and get new cords. No, I want to bust through 50 units in one day and having parts like this that I can change out to test an HDMI only appliance or, you know, VCR electronic on my uh, red, yellow, white plug only TV is so useful. This was 10 bucks on Amazon. There's better ones. I mean, obviously you might have to change it based on your setup, but the whole idea of using small interchangeable parts over giant interchangeable processes, which are not interchangeable, I'm being facetious here, is gonna save you so much money. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my name is Blake. If you like this, if you think it provided value to your life, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, 
and let me know in the comments below and only say nice things. Any mean things, any rude things, and I'm gonna do nothing. See you guys later.